Kona for me has always been everything, really. Um, I I've dreamt of it. Sam Lalo, you're still saying to yourself, yeah, like you envisioned it, you dreamed it. Could I be Ironman world champion today? But well, I think he's been watching this sport since he was a little kid. He knows every bit of the magnitude here, and here's his story. I'm from Sweden. I'm in Kona, Hawaii, uh, and it's two days left to the Ironman World Championships. Four months ago, I was in Nice, France, and I won Ironman France, and uh, now here we are in Kona, Hawaii. I qualified the World Championships in, in St. George um, with, my, with my eighth place. Je m'appelle Arnaud Guillou et je suis aujourd'hui à Kona pour les Championnats du Monde Ironman. My name is Peter Hemerek. I'm a professional athlete from Belgium and uh, this is my first time in Kona. Kona for me is the one race you can win in triathlon, the crown jewel of triathlon. Especially for me, I've been here since I was five years old, watching my dad race. From the moment I started, when I went to the library to look into books about training in triathlon, it was all about Kona and Hawaii. Kona's special for me. It's. Uh... It's been a childhood dream of mine. I've been, ever since I can remember, I've always wanted to win this race and nothing else really. It was a dream to get here and to race this race. It's going to be a, a big stepping stone and I can't, I can't wait. I'm very excited to discover what, what the island has to offer for me. With Kona being like special, humid, hot uh, on the other side of the world, it's been a little bit challenging to prepare from Sweden. The conditions in Kona are, are unique, let's say. It will be a very special race because yeah, it, it still stays Kona and you see every year again like big names who fall out or uh, like names you don't expect are coming to the front. to swim as easy as possible. I had a quite a good start out and then I got into a, a smaller group and it was easy and controlled and I was actually I had time to look at my watch and I was like, oh, like we should be there soon and it felt like it took forever. So actually like going out, it was very controlled. It was, was not very hard and I've been told not to dictate the pace or like write too hard myself. So I just tried to like, have a feel for like what is group doing and these girls have been racing this before like how hard do they want to go and just rely on them setting the pace and then I was unfortunate I was super angry with myself when I got the penalty and I got it uphill on the climb uh, up Harvey which is like ridiculous Lisa Norton pumped over into the penalty tent oh, wow. she made that aggressive move through there and just as you were talking I thought and I was angry and thought that was me getting out of the race, like now I'm not going to have any chances to do well. Uh, and decided to give it a go to go back into, uh, see how, how hard I could ride to get myself back into the race. I feel terrible. 
terrible and I don't have a connection with my body because it's been biking for a long time but still the the pace is a little bit too high which means I'm wasting a lot of energy and I know with the heat it's going to be super bad to waste a lot of energy so I have tried to like focus on myself and get my rhythm uh, and make sure that I didn't push too hard in the beginning. Energy Lab I was in sixth place. In St. George I also finished sixth. Sixth is the place just outside the top five. You missed out on the press conference, uh, you missed out on bonuses and like I really felt like I would love to get like one better if I could. from what you just have done, it's magical and I think that's the very reason why I'm still in the sport. Those moments when you like cross that line and all the emotions and everything that comes with it. Je suis Sylvain Laure, fondateur de la marque Compress Sport. On est né euh, sur le triathlon. J'ai eu la chance de faire il y a 13 ans maintenant l'Ironman d'Hawaï. Et le challenge cette année, c'était de, de revenir. Je suis très très content de, de participer à cette course. Et il est important d'être à la fois pratiquant quand tu crées des produits, tu ressens les produits et les besoins au même niveau euh, que tes clients d'une certaine manière. Euh, et pour moi, c'est euh, oui, un plus que d'être euh, que le fondateur ou que les gens qui travaillent dans la marque soient des pratiquants. Pour moi, l'effet physiologique apporté par le vêtement a été une évidence dès le départ. On a chez Compressport beaucoup de choses à apporter avec notre historique, notre culture du triathlon et ce potentiel, cette opportunité qui est offerte à nous de, je pense sur les dix prochaines années, il va y avoir, on a, on a beaucoup de choses à créer. For 15 minutes I, I felt nobody touched my feet and I thought great I'm away and then uh, what happened was uh, I started to feel somebody touch my feet and I turned around and realized that actually there was 30 guys with me and I saw uh, Christian Blumenfeld's sleeve and I thought damn this is this is not a good start. Finished about minute 25 from the leaders which is not too bad I mean in, in the whole scope of an Ironman that's nothing but you know I just I feel like I'm uh, in Ironman, at least I should be in that front group. It just makes your day easier just starting at the front. I decided to take the time to put my full socks on and um, I thought that I would have a, a better lead out of the swim and that I would have time to put them on. Uh, so it was a bit of a risk to take. And uh, yeah, so I set off, I think on the bike, I was 18th. But this was the first time on the bike where I felt like I was getting stronger and stronger as, as the bike went along. I, normally I kind of start to crumble and I, I can feel the power dropping and here it was, the, it was almost the opposite. I just committed to racing off the front and racing aggressively which is what I said I would do and um, yeah I, I felt good.
happened in the last 12k from 30k on in the run. Um, I don't know if it was carb intake or fluid intake problem. It must be one of the two, but um, I just couldn't run anymore, had to walk some parts and uh, yeah, I'll have to analyze that. The marathon in an Ironman is always horrible, uh, but we, we, know, we know what's coming and uh, in a way it probably wasn't as horrible as normal because I was leading the World Championship. <laughs> Definitely the plan was to stick with him, uh, but when you're seven hours into a race like that in an Ironman, your mind says yes and your body just says no. Time to train for one year and get here better than ever. To be here is a privilege and I really hope that I can come back next year or sometime in the future. Although I beat the world record by eight minutes, it obviously wasn't enough because I came second. So yeah, count on me to come back and to win this race.